you so much for joining. Make it make sense. And uh, just thank you also for the great feedback that we've been getting. I've been getting uh, messages on Instagram and, and on Facebook um, about the appreciation just for the content that we're providing. So I really thank you for reaching out. And as I've said before, uh, if there are topics that you would like to have make more sense, we will give it our best. So you can comment underneath the um, shows as we post them, or you can always stick a question in the feed. Um, use the little icon, the little question icon here at Make It Make Sense. My pledge to you really is that we are just cycling down all of the noise and the static um, and all of the bickering back and forth and trying to bring you facts that are data driven and truthful. And when we have commentary, the commentary is supported by facts data and today with today's guest the law um so all of the shows from last week are available you can find them here on my instagram feed or you can find them on facebook uh, they're the, the people who do fancy computer things that i know nothing about are working on getting them uploaded onto youtube you'll be able to find them there as well um so please do please do go and do that. And if you'd like to support, if you are enjoying what you're receiving and would like to support it, go to the link tree in my bio. There are ways that you can do that. Um, we have a guest today, but before I get to the guest, I had just one piece of news that I wanted to share. And uh, I'll start with a reminder. One of the things that we talked about last week in terms of you getting information for yourself is the availability from the White House of whitehouse.gov forward slash briefing dash room whitehouse.gov forward slash or if you just go to whitehouse.gov to that main page and scroll down a little bit and look for the briefing room you'll see it and there you can see the readout from all of the daily press briefings given by the press secretary you can see whatever executive orders are being signed by the president you can see what the different uh departments under the executive branch are doing, what the vice president is doing, and that information is updated daily. They've been doing that for a year and a month now. So you can start way back January 20th last year, 2021, and you can work your way up to the current day. Um, I would invite you to do that because you definitely need to read and know for yourself so that you can have information. And then if you want to challenge your government, if you want to critique your government, if you want to say you don't like what they're doing, they're not doing enough, they need to be doing something else, at least you're doing it with a base of knowledge. But yesterday um, in the briefing, which was, was um, handled by the Deputy Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, um, and that really is the first time that we've had black women in that spot. So please offer your support there. Uh, but she was the one who conducted the press briefing yesterday. And one of the things that she pointed out um, was that there was an event at the White House yesterday where Vice President Kamala Harris announced alongside FCC Chairwoman um, Rosenworcel and Senior Advisor Mitch Landro that more than 10 million households are enrolled in the Affordable Connectivity Program. Do you guys know what the Affordable Connectivity Program is? I'll tell you. The Affordable Connectivity Program, the nation's largest ever broadband affordability program, was created through the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill. That's the bill that was passed um, mid last year that provided many helps in terms of jobs, in terms of infrastructure, infrastructure planning for cities, et cetera. But one of the other things that it did is created the affordability connectivity program, which enables low income households to apply for discounts towards monthly internet service and a one-time discount on tech equipment, such as laptops or computers. So if you know of people who need that, many of us don't don't realize because you're watching me on here, right? Which means on some device, it means one, you've got some tech device or another, and whether it's your phone, laptop, iPad, something, and two, it means you've got access to internet. There are many households 
in the United States that do not, that where kids uh, don't have Chromebooks or, inf or things they need in order to do the work, which is more and more done online, uh, where parents have to take their kids to Starbucks parking lots or to libraries or other places where they can get access to internet and, and Wi-Fi is necessary and some sort of device is necessary. So this program was the beginning of an answer to that and it says that 10 million households have enrolled thus far. Please share this information. If you know of anyone who needs it, please post about it, share about it. You can look it up on White House Briefing Room. You can look it up other places. But out of the $65 billion that was committed and invested through the bipartisan infrastructure law bill, this was one of the things that was done. And, you know, some of us right now, we, we own 5G. I mean, we're moving at lightning speed, but we've got impoverished families, mothers, fathers, children, who can't do the basics. And this is this is a help to that. Is it everything we need? No, but it is a help. So that's all that I have to say about that. Um, today, we are joined by someone whom, whom I admire and who I hope you already know. We are going to be joined by uh, attorney Yodi Tuelde, and she has her own show on Black News Channel on BNC. It's Making the Case with Yodit, and it comes on nightly, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's Monday through Friday on BNC. But I have asked her to join me here today so we can talk some law. And I think she's coming. Hi, y'all. Hi, what's going on? Well, so much is going on. I mean, I, I think, you know, since I last eyed you, eyeball to eyeball, which was on your show, <laughs> which is the only way we see each other now. We see each other through devices, but it's all good. You're doing good stuff. I've started a whole damn show. So, um, you know, we've been busy. We've been busy. About um, time. But I'm thankful for you being willing to join. And frankly, I know we have a couple of things I want to talk about, but then I'm saying we also can talk about just whatever the heck you want to talk about because you keep your ear to the street um, on what's going on, recording the news nightly. Um, how are things in D-Town? You know, when I tell you one minute it's 20 degrees, the next it's 75, literally Dallas cannot make up its mind on the weather. So right now we're enjoying 75 degree weather, but expecting it to be down to like 25 tomorrow. So, you know, Dallas is Dallas. Um, of course, there's always some crazy news coming out of Texas and you can hear my dog right now barking. Uh, of course, he was quiet the entire time and then he hears my voice and he wants to, he wants to get out. So yeah, um, he's kind of, he's kind of, Monique, let me, let me let him out real quick. Give me one second. That's my dog nephew, um, who she thinks is hearing her voice, but obviously it's that he's hearing my voice. He hears auntie's voice and because Ooh. he's so excited. I was explaining that it was not your voice at all. He's used to your voice. He hears auntie's voice and that's what made for the excitement. He wants to experience Monique. He's like, listen, it's, it's my debut today. Let me, let me say hi to the world and to Monique, auntie Monique, but no, we're not going to do that. Not today. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, but yes, when we start talking about him, we get distracted. So back on track. Um, it's 22 degrees. It was 22 degrees here. Uh, high of 25. And, and I don't live there. I don't live in the East Coast because I can't do the freaking cold weather. I could do triple digit heat any day, but cold weather cannot do. Can't. Well, I like having the seasons, so I don't really mind it. Um, but you guys are doing good if you actually have 75, because this time of year is when I knew I was always trying to get to Dallas for something and either couldn't because it was yeah. ice or I was worried about going because I wouldn't be able to get out because of it. So yep. Yep. I'm thinking that if you got just a couple of seconds of warm weather, um, that that's good. What's going on? Let's talk law. Um, I want to talk to you about Black women in the Supreme Court nominations. I want to talk to you about Black women 
and treatment of black women generally, but are there any hot topics, any legal hot topics that you've been covering on the show that you think we need to know about? Uh, well, at uh, the moment, what we're doing is profiling each of the candidates uh, that Biden is, um, that he has on a short list, the three, um, that would be Katanji Jackson, uh, Leandra Kruger, and J. Michelle Child. So we're doing one every single day so that our viewers are aware of who these women are, um, why they're credentialed, um, and essentially just to, you know, give a platform to to what would be a, a historical nomination, right? This is this is an important moment. And so we, we just wanted to highlight that, of course, on a weekly and basis. And is it for sure, for sure that it's that it's down to those three? I mean, reports, so you, you had reports saying these were the three, and then it expanded to some others, and now it's back to those three. So depending on what you're reading, it yeah, that that is my guess, because Katanji Jackson, I think, would be the front runner, considering the fact that she's already been vetted. Um, and she's on the what second most most powerful court in the country. Um, what I like about Katanji, too, is that um, she has something that most, if not all, of the justices don't. And that is a background as a public defender, right? We're so used to seeing Supreme Court justices come from big law or from the prosecutors. And that was one of the demands made, one, by the Grassroots Law Project of this administration early on to have more diverse backgrounds with their judges. And that is coming from a civil rights background, from a defender's background. So I like that about her. Um, so I think because she's already been vetted, she's a front runner. Uh, then you have California Supreme Court Justice uh, Leandra Kruger. She one has clerked for a Supreme Court justice before, she's, so she's no strangers to the halls of the Supreme Court. She's argued before the <laughs> bless you. She's argued before the Supreme Court. She's been the youngest to be confirmed to uh, the California Supreme Court. Um, again, Ivy Leaguers. So again, they fit well in terms of the education that most of these justices have. And then you have uh, Michelle Childs. Uh, Michelle, yeah, that is J. Michelle Childs, that is, from South Carolina. She didn't come from an Ivy League, which I like that about her. Um, she came from South Carolina law. And uh, I don't know, Monique, there's flags about her because when uh, Lindsey Graham says he is supportive of her, flags go up for me, right? So there is a reason why he is pushing for her, um, uh, you know, above the other two. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing um, all week long, getting into their backdrop, um, their background. And again, you know how the show goes. We talk about wrong. You know, Lindsey, Lindsey Graham was a defense attorney. Sure. You know? Yeah. I don't care. In South Carolina. Carolina, but I'm saying that that is part of his history. Part of his history is as a prosecutor, as a defense attorney, and, and having had a few conversations with him of, of late over the past year, I have an understanding of his orientation where law related things um, are concerned. So I don't necessarily have the same flag. I think he wants somebody that's from his home state. I mean, that's just good politics, right? You get the first black woman on the Supreme Court and it's from your state uh, and it ain't even an election year for him. So it's like, you know, to me, that's all winning. It's gonna be a black woman anyway. So why not the black woman from my state? But this brings up another question because I'm seeing some things in, um, in, in the comments um, guys, if you have a question, stick it in the icon for sure, because we want to pull and pull and pull on Attorney 12 Day while we can. Um, but I'm also wearing Ruth, yeah, Ruth Bader. Yeah. And, we're, and we're throwing it up for the oh. RBG. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, you know, I... <sighs> I understand because I had Cliff um, Albright, you know, from Black Voters Matter on here last week. We were talking about voting, but we wandered up over into this and he was saying he wanted um, they their organization wants somebody that has that strong civil rights background. You know, they want somebody that has isn't necessarily coming from the bench and already detached from all things that are in the struggle. And so he's looking at somebody like a Sherilyn Eiffel. And then I see people 
in there in the comments saying, I, I don't I don't like Katanji. And I'm like, do y'all know Katanji? Who and she's judge Katanji to you actually, but it's like it's you know, and and for me, that brings me to what I said on your show. I'm back in all black everything until they pick somebody because the infighting, if we start fighting, which is what the Congressional Black Caucus came out and did their letter about, which I'm gonna talk to you about and maybe read a little bit from the letter. But what their bottom line was, infighting aids the conservative faction that is going to attack. We give them points that hurt because they can't get their footing right now. They don't know what they're really supposed to say. They don't want to just be saying, we don't want no black girl. So instead of saying that, they're looking for things about qualifications. And in this group, that ain't going to fly. Yeah. Because if, if there was ever some qualified people to be on Supreme Court, but which, of course, you don't even have to be a lawyer to be on Supreme Court. So it's like, what does qualified even <laughs> What well, does qualified even mean? But I'm curious, I'm curious to know why people don't like, or whoever made that comment about Katanji, mm -hmm. please, this is the forum to let us know um, why you don't. Because, Monique, you know, I'm for any one of these candidates because I do think that they're very credentialed, um, more so than the ones that, some of the ones that we have um, <laughs> at the Supreme Court right now. But I don't think that any of the women are beyond reproach. I don't think that if anybody is saying, look, I don't prefer her, but prefer this black woman, it's fine. But I don't think there's anything wrong with saying I don't like this one for this job. And I don't, you know what I mean? It comes with the territory. You're being vetted, not just by the Senate, by the president, but by us, right? We have a say. Um, or at we least, don't, no, we don't. We're at, at least in the no, court of opinion. No, the, we, can, <laughs> we can say whatever we want to say, but we don't have a say. It's not we like we get a vote. Right. I have a show, you have a show, we have a say, but it ain't gonna make I no know, but, when, but oh. my vote for Joe Biden was my say because I knew when I was voting for him that he was gonna pick the first black woman. And so right. for me, I come down on it differently. Everybody pissed me off when, when um, Barack Obama didn't get supported for, for his nomination and they wanted it to be the black woman then, I guess, you know, I just see it differently, but go ahead. So you're saying critique is fair game. I can see that, I can see that, what else? It absolutely is. And I think that this is the time for us to, one, I'm just happy that people are engaged in this conversation because people go into this stuff so blindly and don't actually understand that this is going to shape the landscape of this country for decades to come. And so this is incredibly important. So I don't care what you say, as long as you're, you're talking about it, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm just, I'm, I'm all ears, I'm all open. And that's why, again, we're, we're profiling these candidates because we want people engaged in this conversation. And I want to know again, whoever made that statement about not like you could Jack. Oh, well, he, he followed, he followed up and said, um, that he liked, um, Jane Michelle Childs. So Okay. Maybe it's a like more than a dislike, but that brings up another area because, you know, when I was, um, when this, when the news first came out and I was on Roland's show that week, a couple of weeks ago, there were people, did y'all see my pin tweet? <laughs> I saw it. You want to unpin that because I'm not interested. <laughs> Going on, Paul. Paul's just, Paul's just being too nice. Um, Don't <laughs> Since we get a vote. He, he went for it, and I completely agree. There we go. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I would never want the job, but see, now, I'm, now, here's something I don't know if you guys know about our guest today. She has been um, on the prosecution side. She's been a defense attorney. She's been on the bench, and now she's in media. So when you talk about people who have seen all sides of the landscape, this is one, but I definitely like to be where the action is. So anytime people ask me anything about being on the bench, I'm like, hell no. If you want to talk about me just dying on the vine and being so mad because you see some bad lawyering, when you have to go in the court, when you've been in court all day, oh, I, I have patience, but I know I don't have judicial temperament. Mm -hmm. Me, me and, and here's the thing. We're lifetime appointment i can't do anything for a lifetime <laughs> i can't maybe a term you know but 
I, which is why I, I get I give so much respect to those who sacrifice themselves to do this kind of work uh, because Yodi can't do it. Just, it <laughs> the politics that comes along with it too, not about it. Just I can't do it. I can talk no. about it. But not gonna do it. No. No. Yes. Yeah. So the yesterday um, the the CBC apparently had a closed door meeting, which you know is always somebody in there. This like leak in and fly on the one nothing is ever it just it never goes right the closed door meetings yeah. end up coming to us so after the closed door meeting they do this letter and in the letter um to the mr president they they are thanking him obviously for holding true to his promise but they also are highlighting um, the need for there not to be, at least among their caucus, infighting beef and, and, and picking and choosing and pitting Black women against each other by saying this one has this, this one has that, this one has this, this one has that, um, because they recognize that there are members of Congress, senators like Ted Cruz, who are willing to openly come out of their mouth you know, and senators like, like, what's his name? Who was like, I just, I just, I, I want to make sure that she, kn she knows something more than what was, what was it he said? She knows something more than how to, but I'm already feeling my blood boiling. So, yeah, they're saying some crazy things, but, um, I, the, the other thing that I, the reason I agree with them is because as I was saying, I was on Roland's show and, it, and, and the comment was, let's not do um, business as usual and have someone with an Ivy League education. You don't have to have this Ivy League education um, in order to be on the Supreme Court because, you know, then you have people like James Shell who is not from an Ivy League background and okay I get it I get it but I spoke up and and um Reese Colbert and I spoke about this last week I was I was like oh he said J Crew catalog thank you y'all keep me keep me up today he said one knows something more than J Crew catalog I'm like and to think that you think that she would have that kind of money and be ordering from J Crew catalog but I digress huh. um <laughs> the, so my point was, but wait a minute. So now, now for all the years we couldn't get into right. Ivy League schools. Right. What our folks are gonna hold against us is that we matriculated through the halls of Harvard and and Yale. Oh. You know, I mean, and I'm Howard till the day I die. H oh. you, you yeah. know. I mean, I'm gonna come with 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 all of that, and 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 I mean it. But I'm going to be the last one to say, because this sister went to Harvard. Right. Let's, let's look for another. Come on now, y'all. Yep. Yep. Keep talking, Monique. My dog is eating something he shouldn't be eating. Keep okay. talking. Can you bring him back? Can you bring him back? So <laughs> um, my point in saying that is think this through, guys. You know, we, we can disagree about who the best person would be for the job. But let's not dress down these Black women, these qualified Black women. Hi, Miles. Qualified Black women. This is the show. Yes. <laughs> to end the whole show. Ooh, you get on my nerves. Go ahead, Monique. Um, let's not dress down these Black women right. because of things that are are the best about us and we and know we, ourselves you know yeah. what i mean like th this is i would have guessed that someone other than someone in, in the congressional black caucus would have said something like that but of course it, it would be us and oh, no, it wasn't somebody in the congressional black caucus oh it was who was it no it was while we were on the show it was Roland. oh Roland martin <laughs> Roland hater martin okay that's shocking um, no, so I need to bring him on my show in order to expound because I'm kind of confused. That's shocking to me, Roland would say something like that. He was saying that it's an elitist club, it's an elitist organization, and that you, it, there ought to be a recognition that you can get a good education 
from other places. And but I, why a black woman is up why for the Why did I be the first black woman to prove that? Act? That's what I'm saying. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. No. And, and no, we know that we have to go above and beyond. We have to take that extra mile in order to even be contenders, right, in this, in this white male dominated field. And so to say that is, is, is concerning, especially for Roland. I'm surprised you said that. And you can tell him I said that. Roland, if you're in the comments somewhere, I'm sure he's lurking. He's not, he's in Liberia. So we're, of course. we're, we're free right now. He's uh, covering the 200th centennial, the cent bicentennial celebration for that's right. you know, like Liberian democracy. So that's good stuff too, that I haven't had a chance to talk about yet. I, I read a little bit about it last week, but I haven't been able to have a full conversation. Um, and so what do you think though we can do to prepare ourselves and combat the attack that's coming for whoever this sister is that ends up getting the nod. You know, and this is something that has been incredibly hard for us to do as a community, but I think that with the attacks that will come inevitably with this nomination is to not have the attacks coming from our community. I mean, you know, and, and we just need to stand in solidarity at least on that front. Um, is that possible? I believe in our people. I believe that it can be. Um, but again, there are always these powers that be that love to just divide us. And that's just not going to be helpful in this fight. At the end of the day, we need a black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court, period. It's, it's well long overdue. That is the point. It's not all about, oh, diversity. And it's about, you know, someone's gender or race. These women are qualified, they're smart, they have the experience, right? They happen to be black women, yes, but we need them on the court now, especially while we can get them on the court with a president who is a Democrat. We don't know what's gonna happen in 2024, we just don't. Um, so while he can actually put someone on the bench, we need him to do so, we need to hold him to his promise. I believe Biden's going to make, uh, do, make good on his promise. Because and look at all the black women that he's already put on. I mean, they've, they've been, and, and they're really good, smart, smart judges, but more um, Black women being appointed than any of the um, prior administrations. I, I just, I, I, it irritates me that this, this conversation about um, whether we're good enough always comes up because of this idea that, oh my God, he's just nominating them because they're Black and female. Absolutely not. They, well, what, yes, but at the same time. But explain why that's necessary. What, a black woman? Why it's necessary for him to make a point of it. Because to me, people don't understand that if he didn't make a point of doing it, it wouldn't get done the same way it hasn't gotten done. And it wasn't because we didn't, there weren't well, qualified my, candidates. No one, no one makes the argument that there's more, there's a lot of white men on, on the U.S. Supreme Court. Why is it that there's always this 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 argument that well okay why are you trying to diversify something whether it, it's it's corporate america or sports or um here as in this case the supreme court there's never an argument that we're, we're nominating or putting in too many white males we're nominating putting too many white females but for some reason when it comes to people of color there's a quota and one is too much we've yeah. never never had a black woman and for some reason it is an issue still and it's always it always comes down to well we're only doing it because they're black and female no we're doing it because we were supposed to a long time ago and we're supposed to have the u.s supreme court actually look like the united states of america right and it doesn't and it hasn't for a very long time and so this again like this forever time, ever <laughs> at all and so why not? Why not? You know, yeah. and this idea that, I mean, think about the Super Bowl. I mean, there was conversation about the halftime show. Well, why is there no diversity? Why weren't there any white musicians? Why was it just all black entertainers? It's like, there is always a problem when we 
outnumber them. But in this case, we don't. We are just asking for one. But see, that's also the issue too. We're so conditioned to only having one space available for us. I want to see more Black women on the US. Well, and that's the famous question that Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg answered. She said, she was asked um, how many women would would she be satisfied with being on the Supreme Court? When would there be enough? And she said, when there are nine. <laughs> she said, when there are nine. And I'm like, that, because that would signal, if people want to talk about standards and caring about qualifications more than you care about uh, race, if the patriarchy is dead, if racism is dead, prove that to me. Right. Prove that to me. Right. Because just because there, for now, are more white men um, and, and women in the United States as we get browner and browner doesn't mean that the configuration of the court has to look like that identically. The, the, the fact of the matter is we should be able to see a court that is majority brown. We right. should be able to see a court that is majority female, and it should be a normal C. There should be an assumption that they're just going to do their jobs. Well, I mean, think about who puts them in these positions. Yet again, we have yet to have a, a woman president, right? Um, so we're still having to fight just to get a woman in these positions. So, of course, Black women? Oh, we're... We're down here. And so right. and people, everybody who com who complains um, ab about former President Barack Obama, he only appointed women. Yeah. Yeah. Think on that, people. It, it's, it's, <laughs> his, we, his appointments were all women. Just we saying. need to get the conversation and start asking the right questions. And it, it's not enough that we have to just get one in right it's it's getting this one in and then the next and then the next so it, it's it's i i hope that the conversation continues beyond this black woman's appointment whoever it is um and that we don't just stop there because we're satisfied we should never be satisfied and we should always continue to fight to get more brown people on the supreme court because these issues that are coming up i mean the the, the issues that are pending right now are so incredibly important and we're having a white male's view make these important lifetime decisions, right? On our bodies. Um, well, what do, you, what do you think about a Senate run? Because somebody in here is pointing out that we also, at this point, you know, which is the other thing that was in the Congressional Black Caucus letter, that when this woman, this Black woman is voted on, there will be not one single Black woman U.S. Senator voting on her confirmation. Um, and, and that's something everybody can do something about because if we don't run, we can't win. That's for sure. That's for sure. And that's one thing. Um, that's another thing I won't do. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> because we always get those, you know, we get those people that, and, and it's, it's such a compliment because people see us, they see that we're really passionate about this work, um, that we make some sense. And it's like, well, why don't you, you know, run? And it's, again, it's such a sacrifice but you're right, it, it takes us as a community to, to support those and, and lift those people up that want to take um, that route because it's incredibly important to be represented uh, in Congress. But yeah, I, I think that it is important um, not just at the Supreme Court level, but all the way down. I mean, from local, I always talk about local elections. I'm, I'm sitting here yeah. trying to see who we can, you know, support to run for DA, you know what I mean, in my city. And so... Yeah. Of course, it's important. Um, Senate runs are incredibly important. I think what the last one was Kamala, it, a black woman that is. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. But talk a little bit about local elections for people who don't understand why that's important, especially like a DA election. And the last thing I want to talk about actually um, is about that because you and I were having just an off to the side conversation about prosecutors and the way prosecutors are viewed. But if you could explain um, local elections and also the need for people in that particular office who have an understanding of our community. I just talked to someone, a community activist, um, 
out of Ohio, I believe, Cleveland. And then also Wesley Lowry, the writer, um, he wrote a story about how um, there was this high, incredibly high percentage of white judges um, basically dictating the life of so many black and brown people that come through the legal system. And this community activist was talking about how so many people in his community don't bother voting because one, they don't know who's running. <clears throat> these, these individuals, these candidates don't go into our communities because they don't, because we don't vote. So yeah. there's, right. A lot of these candidates run unopposed because of that, because no one else will run against them. Yeah. Um, and then he actually told me something really revealing and it was really confusing for me to wrap my mind around, but he says a lot of people don't vote uh, because they're afraid that, they'll vote for someone that will eventually lock them up, which to me was, mm. was, was interesting, but also very frustrating. Mm. Um, and, you know, they have their reasons. I, I believe that, but you can't be in this fight. You can't have a chance if you don't make your voice heard. And the way you do that is by voting. And so, you know, here in Dallas, what we, what we do, um, when a black woman runs, she's more than likely for the bench that is more than likely going to win. Um, because Dallas is just, a, you know, it, it's, it's Democrat run. Um, we fully support black women here in the city. Um, and I think we have one of the most diverse benches in the country uh, next to Houston. And so that's because we push all of our support and our resources behind, say, a local attorney that's been doing, you know, you know, criminal defense work for decades, wanting to run against someone who's held this bench for for forever. And so it's, it takes one of our own in our community to one step up and want to run. Um, and then it takes all of us pushing behind that candidate in order to get them on the bench. But it's so incredibly important local elections, and we don't pay much attention to them because they're not on the, you know, the news, national news, like the presidency is. But we tend to pay attention to who the DA is, who the sheriff is, um, when things like a police involved shooting happens and we're calling yeah. for charges against law enforcement officers. Yeah. And it's like, hold up, why are there no charges? Well, who's, who's responsible? Oh, that DA, why is the DA not? Well, see, we're asking all the right questions at the wrong time. Yep. And we're being, reactive instead of proactive let's actually get people in those positions before something happens yeah. so that when something does happen because it will we know that we're in good hands at least we think so we've put that person in office we know where they stand on certain issues we know that they're going to be at least transparent and honest right yeah. um and so that's what's so frustrating about um, what we see in the news and then what, what, what I see in, you know, Twitter or on IG and it's people's comments that are like, well, they're asking all these questions and they're frustrated. And it's like, well, did you have any part in your local elections? No. Well, there we go. Did you, when you were talking about being upset with a jury verdict, because let's just say a cop does get indicted and does get prosecuted and then those are not guilty. Well, did you did actually you show up for jury duty? <laughs> Did you show up for jury duty when you were summoned? No? Well, I don't want to hear it. I don't. No. Right? Yeah. And that's just, a, you know, a tough pill to swallow for some people because it takes a lot of self-reflection and self-awareness. And it, you really have, when people say, well, I want to do something, do just that. Do your part as an individual. Because I think people want to do some grand, you know, big thing. Yes. It really doesn't take all of that. You do your individual part and we all do that collectively. Oh, my God. Right? Yeah. And so I can't say that enough. And it gets on my nerves because it's like, how many more times do we need to do this? You know, mm -hmm. Keith Ellison in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. My God, AGs are important in our states. Yeah. Vote yeah. for them. You know why? Keith Ellison is the one that actually went and prosecuted Derek. Yes, made the call, yes, made the call and made the call to bring in some experts to get that job done because they didn't even use people that were in the office. You know, people right. stepped out of their private sector jobs in order to prosecute those cases, former prosecutors. And so all of that was about, again, one man making a sacrifice because he walked away from cushy life, you know, as a representative in order to go and do that. And it, he, he could have been elected and elected and elected, but 
cared enough about his home state. And I remember, you know, just my, my own parents' example, because if something was going on in, in our town, being from Galveston, my mom was at the council meetings. You know, yep. she was showing up, she was speaking. If something was going on with the school board, there were people in the community who cared about what was happening. And so investing in, in your own space matters. And you yep. guys, you would be surprised listen to what you're saying you'd be surprised how many how few people actually show up so if you show up yeah. your voice really is gonna matter there and if you get three people to go with you you might be turning some things upside down or right side up whatever the case may be right and that's the thing i mean i think it just it takes because i think people want to be fed this information and it really does take action on your part just to figure out who holds office in your in your city, in your county? Um, and people don't want to do that, especially when they're used to being fed this information via social media. But again, social media isn't always that accurate. And it's, it's not food. It, it and that is. is the entire reason why yeah. I'm here right now. It is frustration yeah. about it not being food. You know, the whole make it make sense mantra for me yes. is that I'm a newsie. And I watch and I end up like, what was that? You know, I mean, make it make sense is a, is a sarcastic question, but we're trying to answer it because you go on Twitter, you get confused. You go to the, you know, the far right, it ain't right. You go to the nope. far left, they're way too left. It's, it, you, we, it, it has to be somewhere in the middle where you're just getting the facts. So that's why I was saying when you were first logging on, go to whitehouse.gov and look. You know, go to yourstate.gov. If you're in Texas, texas.gov is where you go. You can find out your polling place. You can find out whether your voter registration is current. You can find out who your mayor is. You can find out who your council people are. All of that information is there. Um, and so the, the and, and for people who are on here, now if you ain't got no Wi-Fi, no 5G, 4G, 3G, 2G, I understand. I want you to get that affordable internet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because they're trying to do something about that. But if you watch them right now, that's not your excuse. So it has to be each one reach 3,000 right now and, and get to the facts. As I said last week, this is one of those times where do your own research is a thing. Right. You, you don't right. need to turn into a molecular biologist. You don't. But it's, it's, you can, yeah, citizenship. Exactly. And that's why what you're doing is so incredibly important and consistent for people to come to. If they don't want to do the work um, or at least don't know where to start, you give them those resources. I mean, you were talking about whitehouse.gov and, and telling them things that they probably have never heard of. And now they've, they've, they've heard a term. If they're curious to know more, then they know where to go. And so it's incredibly important what you're doing um, shows that, you know, like mine, in terms of trying to, you know, hey, the, here, here are the candidates. Here's why they're, they're qualified. Here's what you need to know. This is how mm -hmm. the Senate works. This is how they, they're being confirmed. Um, it's important that we filter through the nonsense, the clickbait, the emotions of it all. And that's why I respect you and your opinion. Sometimes I don't agree with them, Monique, and that's okay, because you see things by the law we're lawyers we're supposed to but it's so incredibly hard nowadays in the environment that we're in yeah. um for us to make decisions based on emotion and we can't do that um and cancel culture people don't like to hear things that are just not what everybody else is thinking or saying um when listen i wish things were different um, but here's the law and here's why, and that, not to say that the law can't be wrong because clearly right. it can, but here's what we're working with. Here's how you can empower yourself is by knowing what you're up against. This is what the law says. This is what it is. And this is how the facts apply. Right. Yeah. Um, and this is what you can do to change it. Yeah. So, which keeps people from getting, you know, you and I have talked about this, like people will want to march, but what you're marching for, because the action item you're asking for is not going to happen. The experts can tell you that not just that it's not going to happen, but that it wouldn't be right if it happened based on where the law is currently. So what we need to be marching and sitting in and protesting and doing whatever about is a change to these policies. And so that's why I think you and the job that you do is critically important. Anybody who's willing to just kind of stare down the mob 
and say, okay, but here's where we are. And in order to get someplace different, this has to happen. But right. we've been on here like 25 minutes longer than we we're supposed to be on here. Your D's going to have to come Wait. back again again because she's my friend. So I will lean on her. But I know you guys have enjoyed this. You can enjoy her, including tonight in her own show. That's Black Woman with Show, Talking Law, Monday through Friday, Making the Case, 9 p.m. Eastern on BNC. And if you don't have BNC on cable, you can, there's other ways you can get to it, right? You would explain it. Yep, you can go to bnc.tv um, and then click on the link that says how to watch and it'll direct you depending on who your provider, uh, cable provider is. You can stream it if you have a Samsung Plus TV, just like I do, um, you can stream it for free. Um, but there's, yeah, there's plenty of ways how you can, you know, watch and just by going on the website and clicking on that link. So bnc.tv. Yes, and so let's do that, guys, and let's support, because if you um, click through all of your cable channels and all of your digital um, programming, you will see uh, one and a half shows that are covering law all the time. So the fact that our sister has one, that matters. That matters. And, and not covering the law but covering issues that affect our community yeah. specifically so yeah. we don't ever have that no we we ain't got that this is she's she's all we got <laughs> yeah no, no pressure no pressure right you know pressure at all thank you so much it has been a bye. pleasure mo yo rise bye. again woo woo <laughs> um bye 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 mo Bye, nephew. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yoji. I appreciate it. Um, so, guys, I, I know Enjoy your it. time with um, my, my dear friend and colleague, Yodi Twelde. She's got a show tonight. So the fact that she was willing to come on and spend so much time with us, I truly appreciate. Uh, this will be posted later on today so that you can watch again. I hope that you will share it uh, when it gets posted. Post it in your stories. Or, or repost, you can repost the entire show or share on Twitter something that you learned when you watched um, and point people in the right direction so that they can get this information because that's why we're here. We're here to make it make sense. Thank you so much for joining. Um, please support. Go to the link tree in my bio. You can do like a one-time uh, support donation through, through Cash App or through PayPal, or you can follow me on, be a subscriber on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Monique Presley. And we're going to do behind the scenes conversations. We're going to have all these shows there. We're going to have special interviews, lots of stuff, stuff over there, different stuff, content everywhere. So thank you. I will see you tomorrow at noon. Have a great day on purpose. Bye-bye.